Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Whew. So today I'm going to talk about some deep emotions that I have been having over the last couple of days. I find that um, on social media people normally literally just talk about the highlight reel <laughs> and I feel like that misses half of our human experience. Um, you know, I really believe that like when we allow ourselves to feel our darkness and integrate those parts of ourselves that, you know, we may not want to share with the public, um, you know, the sad parts of us, the ugly parts of us that we haven't processed, like the emotional stuff that we're not sure what's going on and we don't even understand ourselves. When we're able to face that with love and... Like, say you're feeling sad. Like, this week, I was feeling sad. I had some really nice therapy sessions where I was able to access some of my grief over my last relationship that I hadn't yet processed. And also being on this island in a very small space, like, you know, it's kind of like a village here where it's very hard to not run into each other. Um, it just... I, I've, I was feeling a lot this week. And... You know, normally I've noticed like people just kind of go literally dark. They just won't share anything on social media. And for me, I think it's important to like honor the space that's needed to process those emotions, which I did. And usually what for me happens is my body literally just takes up space like the last couple of days. Oh, I have felt really cloudy in my head it just kind of this. You know, I thought, am I getting sick? I never, I never get sick. I'm always like, s the only time I get sick is when I need to process something. And I really believe in like psychosomatics where it's like whatever is happening in your body is happening in your emotional reality. So I really allow myself that space to feel it. So like the last couple of days, I've just ground, you know, stayed at home, like watched TV, made a lot of tea, took a lot of ginger and turmeric shots. You know, I did what I needed to to take care of my body so that I didn't get sick. And at the same time, I knew it was just emotions. Like for me, uh, I don't know if you believe in astrology, but I have sun and moon and Scorpio. And there's this thing I've heard with Scorpio energy. It's like this deep well of emotions. And if it's not able to fully process, it can just like shut down. And I think that's what I've been doing in different ways. It's like there's like levels to that shit, you know, like there's layers upon layers of this processing grief and just processing breakup and heartache and all this stuff. And there's been a lot of positive emotions that have come from this of feeling free and feeling like more in my power and just very clear on like the life that I'm choosing to create for myself um, and also honoring all the beautiful things that have come out of my last relationship and also there's this layer of grief of just like super deep sadness um, that I feel I was just kind of n just not dealing with that level. <laughs> uh, and then this week after some therapy sessions and feeling just more space here on the island, like last week when I got here, I was like organizing a play party and organizing my house and, you know, buying my tickets for America and like ordering a ton of stuff for pretty Man. So there was just a lot of like 3D things happening. And this week I had a lot more space to like feel. <laughs> and it kind of felt like a tsunami of emotions coming over me. And I was just really allowing myself to feel all of that. Um, and it, in a way it made me also really grateful that I am leaving the island because I feel... Um, for me, a lot of times the best way to process my grief is through movement, like like actually like getting a new energy, new, literally like new people, new energy, new adventure, everything. And and that's not, I, I actually don't do that in a way to run away from what I need to process. I do it in a way to like create safe space for myself. Um, and you know, I have been very supported by my community here and stuff, so I've been able to process a lot. But there is just something about being completely in a new environment. Like for me, having traveled to so many countries, I'm just, I know this feeling of just like getting somewhere new and just being like, okay, which version of Brittany are we going to create now? You know, like which version of me am I going to meet here? 
Like I am discovering myself new every time I'm on one of these adventures. <laughs> like one time when I broke up with a boyfriend, I decided to uh, go to Cuba with a guy I just met at Carnival um, for three weeks and have an epic love adventure there. And then another time I decided to volunteer on a sail. Another br After another breakup, I decided to volunteer on a sailboat with a woman who owned the sailboat and was leaving it. And I sailed all the way around France and then back to England. And I'd never worked on a sailboat before. <laughs> so I like learned. I, it was this very epic adventure that went on for multiple weeks. And I just remember in the middle of that, you know, we'd be like dealing with like a literal storm and the boat's going crazy and everyone's trying to run around and like get all the ropes that we need, <laughs> like lock everything down. And in the middle of that physical storm that was happening externally, I would just start sobbing and like no one could hear me because the storm was so loud. And for me, it was like this really perfect <laughs> place to process stuff. Like, I don't, I don't know, like I just really enjoy this kind of like adventure newness and just yeah lots of space so I have many other epic heartbreak adventures that I could share but um this Bernie Man one is going to be one for the books <laughs> so we I leave tomorrow morning that's why I wanted to make one more podcast before I go uh so I get on the 11 30 boat and I'm super excited I'm going to spend one night in Bangkok uh, with a friend that I know from the play parties. He wants to take me to um, some like underground jazz speakeasy clubs there because I was telling him he lives in Bangkok and I was telling him like I don't really get Bangkok because every time I go there I've hung out with friends who are more in like normal life matrix life whatever you want to call it and they drink and they want to go like clubbing and I don't drink and uh, I love dancing but I don't really enjoy like clubbing environment where everyone's super wasted and he was like no there's a whole part of Bangkok that you haven't seen like the hipster conscious scene and apparently this specific speakeasy on Sunday nights with this really cool jazz singer so anyways we're gonna go there and like bop around and have a good time <coughs> and yeah, I fly on Monday. Wow. I fly on Monday to America. I think this is also what I've been processing this week is like, people are like, oh yeah, you're going to go see your family. And it's like, how do I put into words something that most people will never understand? The fact that I haven't seen my immediate family for 10 years uh, because I left my religion 10 years ago and <coughs> they decided that they didn't want to speak to me anymore and didn't want to see me. I even like went to Portland. I was traveling through in 2018 and I was going to meet up with my mom and uh, I was super excited to see her there. I was there for a conference for a couple days and she lived there at the time. And um, the last minute she just didn't want to see me. Like I was there, I was like ready to go meet her and then she just decided, no, I don't want to see you. And my mom like really loves me. Like I grew up with her telling me every single day how much she loves me. And all of this is because of the religion that I grew up in. Like they are programmed to um, tell all of the people there that it is my, my own soul is at stake according to the religion. And if my family chooses to <coughs> shut their doors on me and like cut me out of their lives, then this will motivate me to come back to the church which let me tell you, it is not motivating me to come back to the church. It is just verifying for me that this is a place that I do not want to be part of culturally, spiritually, and in my body. Ah, but like that, that feeling of like I'm going and I know that energetically this is already going to give me the upgrades and heal my family energetically because it's all energy. And at the same time, the feeling of going there and not knowing like if they're going to want to see me like on a human level, my inner child is just like, I'm scared, <laughs> you know? And that's super vulnerable to say. Um, and then also I know it's gonna be, everything's gonna work out for the best. And I have cousins who were raised in the religion but never got baptized and we're still in contact like on both sides of my family. So I know for sure that I'll at least see them and I'm super excited to see them. Um, and they have some of them have kids and stuff and I'm like really excited to be in their lives and catch up with them But the thing I really wanted to share in this podcast was like how important it is for us to allow ourselves without judgment to feel all of the things that 
you know, I would call like the darker shadow emotion. So like grief, pain, sadness, just, you know, just like basically not the joy. <laughs> um, and I feel like this is super important because this is also what it is to be human. You know, like being human is not about feeling joy all the time. It's about uh, accepting ourselves and loving ourselves for where we are right now in our process. So whether that's like, um, you know, if that equals us being sad or not understanding what's going on or just feeling confused, whatever it is, you know, like it's like, are you okay with your, are you, are you, do you love yourself? Do you accept yourself for where you are right now? Like think about your life and what's happening in your life. And do you feel that you are good enough uh, to have a source connection? Do you feel like you still have it no matter if you were feeling down today or not? No matter whatever vibration you're on. Like that's the point is that no matter where we are and what we're doing, we still have the source connection. We still are worthy of love and and to feel connected to fellow humans as well, not just counting source and, you know, source, God, universe. Like, it doesn't matter where we are in our lives. Like, we still deserve this connection to source and also to the people that we love around us. And I guess I just want to say that, like, this is also part of the process. And when you allow yourself to, when you accept yourself in these moments, then like the point is not to be fully in the joy all the time. The point is to be in your body all the time. So again, the point is not to feel this high elevated emotion all the time. The point is whatever you are feeling, you allow yourself to be fully present in your body. You accept yourself. You love yourself. Because when you do that, then 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 the energy is able to move through your body and also this is just like being human like being human is feeling all the feelings i call it um you know when you are feeling these sad feelings just you're still like if you're still able to be fully present with it then you're able to feel what i call this beautiful sorrow which is just like i'm still so grateful to be alive right now and me being alive right now equals feeling this sad thing. And also, I'm just so grateful that I get to experience the feeling of this because, wow, it's so beautiful to be alive. You know, it's so beautiful to be able to have this human experience. And it always gets better. If you are in full trust of the universe or if you're allowing yourself to be guided and to feel this protection, if you choose to be in the knowingness yourself, so this is where you come in, this is where your work is, is to allow yourself to feel this trust of the universe. Like this week when I was feeling super down, I wasn't like, oh, well, I guess, you know, the universe doesn't like me. Oh, I guess God does not hear for me. No, I know I was still like, I know I'm fully supported. I know I'm guided. This is just part of the process. Of course, I would love to have energy to go to the gym and like, you know, go out and do normal things. For whatever reason, I need to stay home right now and allow myself to feel all of these things. And wow, I'm so grateful I have a stable, secure home and a loving dog and cat and, you know, friends that check on me and like, I am still fully supported and everything that I need to get done before my trip will get done. Like I had a couple moments this week where I was like, oh my God, there's too many things on my to-do list. <laughs> Cause like I'm a little type A, if you know what that means, it just means like I'm a little bit of an overachiever. And so I'm like, I want to do this thing and I want to make the house nice and I want to do this in it. And then there's just this, this point where I hit where I'm like, these are the things I can get done. <laughs> everything else is okay. You know, like, also, I can allow other people to show up for me and help, like, just random little errands that, like, friends are helping me with, which means so much to me because it's, like, one less thing I need to do. And then I have space here to make a podcast with you. So I'm really grateful for them. Um, I had someone who brought up a really good point in one of my podcasts where I was talking about, like, focusing on the positive, you know, and they were like, okay, yeah, but you can't, like... You can't just act like your problems don't exist because, you know, then you're just 
basically not in tune with your reality. Like you can't just be like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And I understand what they're saying. They're basically like, you know, don't run away from what's right in front of you. Like, because there's probably something you need to look at there. Um, and I wanted to share a process that I have learned that has really helped me that I feel like could help you as well. So if you're in this, they actually call it like beta three, like the frequency. Um, so this is the, the frequency that most people are on throughout the whole world, which is like this kind of reactive, uh, frequency of like fight or flight. So it's like beta three, beta two, um, and then there's another, there's like, you know, alpha, uh, and then there's gamma frequency. Th like the alpha and the gamma is what we want, we, we're, we're aiming to be on. Because alpha is like, I understand that I am com completely in control. I'm controlling my environment. I'm choosing the reality I want. And gamma is like even a step b uh, beyond that of like understanding the scope of everything and just being completely in alignment and in, in your center center no matter what happens but most people are in beta 2 or beta 3 which is like oh my god what's happening oh ah, ah. and it's like this very reactive you can tell just the energy of how I just said that it's like ah like your whole body is like goes on high alert and we're not meant to as humans be in this high alert response energy this is what um, creates cortisol in our in our bodies and we're not meant to, like, this is supposed to be like, you know, when we were hunter-gatherers time, when, like, when they were going hunting, this would happen, like, once a season or whatever. Like, this was a very rare thing. And in today's society, most people are running on this all the time, which is really not great for your bodies. It's not great for your psyches. And what I found it to helps with this is so if you're in this like loop process of like say you're, you're facing a, what you would consider a problem in your life right you're like this is bothering me and it puts me in this beta two or three response this reactive frequency where I don't feel safe emotionally physically whatever and you're not able to work through it so we're going to go through what I call the complaint process so this has really helped me a lot. You can, you can talk this out with someone or you can do this in your journal. I do both. So for instance, I'll give you an example. Say you're, you know, you and your partner occupying the same house and you have a complaint that you feel like you are the only one who picks up around the house. You're the only one who cleans. Um, so the complaint is, I feel like I don't get any help cleaning the house. And so... <laughs> you know, some spiritual people would be like, okay, it's so just throw positive affirmations on top of that. No, I don't agree with that. There's a reason why you're feeling this complaint and it's really important to address it because it's trying to tell you something that can, once you're able to address it, then your life can get better from that. So it's a beautiful thing if you're able to face it in a productive way, right? So the important thing is to not make the complaint bigger than what it actually is, like get to the core of it. So if the if the example we're using is, I feel like, you know, I don't get any help around the house. I don't get help cleaning the house. I'm the only one who cleans the house. And um, then, so that's the complaint and then the feeling. So if you're writing this in your journal, you could say like, I feel really frustrated. I feel disrespected because no one's like, helping me I feel you know whatever the feelings are to really honor them and then you need to come up with a solution so the solution could be hire a cleaner you know or it could be you speaking with whoever you're occupying the house with like with your partner and be like yo here's my complaint this is how I feel and this is what I need so when you get to the need part the solution part it's really that there is a need that is not being met and most of the time, like when we are in relationships with other people, there is sometimes we have like, whenever there's a complaint, it's usually because there's a need not getting met. And a lot of times the reason why I was bringing this up is like, we have like, we have these un like conscious, it's like these subconscious expectations of 
you know, how we show up in relationship versus how we think our partner should show up. And a lot of times it's like how we personally literally show up. And so we just want to be met in that. But not everyone's the same, you know, and not everyone needs the same thing. So it's more just like, are you personally getting your needs met in this situation? This has helped me so much because another thing that you could do is like, like I've had times where, you know, I felt like unsupported in my community, like unsupported in, in like leading the community here on Copenhagen. And, you know, this makes me feel overwhelmed and, and just like not seen, you know, this and that. And so like the need that I have is, yeah, the need I have is more support, right? But also you can also ask the universe for a frequency that you are, you're needy in your life in order to get your needs met. So, I find it even more interesting to s tell the universe the frequency and then allow the universe to bring people that match that frequency. So for me, with the community support, I told the universe, I need people in my life that are actually supportive, that feel nourishing. The frequency I'm asking for is nourishing, supportive, like practical help with the community leadership. And then it becomes less about putting this expectation on a specific person and then allowing yourself to just ah, relax knowing that the universe is going to get it figured out for you you know like you just say what you need and you speak it out loud to whoever of course it's in the situation that you need to and then you can you can release it knowing that it is going to work out knowing like tr this is where the trust comes in but it, this has helped me <laughs> so much to uh, get out of this loop because a lot of times people are like, I'm so frustrated at this person. I'm so frustrated at the situation. But they're, they're still, in, they're like in the step one. The, they're in that complaint loop. But if you can get from the complaint to how you feel and then what are your, what are your needs that are not being met and then you're able to speak up for them or get them met yourself. <sighs> and that's super helpful for me. That is a positive way of going into your emotions, these ones that are, you know, not joyful, and asking yourself, okay, what needs to be learned here? What needs to be shifted? Because everything is a learning lesson for us. Everything is allowing us to grow our consciousness, to feel better in our bodies, to feel more connected. And a lot of times people have a hard, like a lot of times people may feel so you may feel, I'm going to say straight up, you may feel uncomfortable speaking this out loud to people. Like, hey, I have this need not being met. But the real, the real important thing here is that you are creating a relationship with yourself. So y this is all one big game with yourself where you are putting yourself first and your needs first. Because if you're going around like knowingly, like now that I've told you this, you'll be able to know, like consciously understand what your needs are a lot quicker. And it is your responsibility to get those met. Because in relationships, we put this subconsciously, we put these expectations for our needs to be met by the other person. And then we get angry at them when they don't meet our needs, even if they don't even know what our needs are. <laughs> you know, it's one thing if you speak them clearly and the person is just refusing to meet them. But then again, once you speak them cl clearly and if the person doesn't want to meet them, then it comes back again on you as a responsible party to decide, do I want to still be in connection to this person? So throughout this whole thing, you are still in control. The empowerment is still there for you. You are always, there's no victims. There's no victims. So like this is I'm giving you this these tools so that you're able to move through these emotional processes in a way where you are staying in your power. And the real the real version of empowerment I'm learning more and more is that <coughs> excuse me, it's that no matter what happens, you stay in your center. Because the second that you allow yourself to get out of your center, it's actually you saying to the universe, to people, I choose to engage in this frequency that actually is not serving me. Because when you're out of your center, that means you're upset, right? Like you're, you're feeling upset or like you're off. You're not in alignment. But the only reason why that happened is because you chose to engage in a frequency that doesn't align with who you are or doesn't meet your needs. So when you look at people less on a less personal level of like this person did this thing to me or I don't like them and, and you look at 
um, more practically on like, oh, the frequency this person is giving me, I don't, I don't choose to engage in this frequency anymore. Like this, this is below my standards. And so, you know, and that person can change, they can change their frequency and then you can choose to engage with them later on. But like for now, they don't meet your standards of, you know, the frequency that you want to meet. And so all of it is about staying in your center. And when you stay in your center, you're able to, like staying in your center means knowing that you are always guided and protected and that everything's happening for you. <sighs> I just love taking a deep breath on that. And that like every person that comes into your life is there for your benefit. Um, all of that is true when you have these tools in order to play the game. It's like life is this beautiful game that we're here to play and to enjoy and to grow our consciousness and to connect and make love and, you know, build beautiful things and make babies and go on adventures. It's all beautiful if you're able to have the tools in order to play the game right. And most people <laughs> are running through the world not knowing, they don't have the tools and then they're like shutting down or they're getting in this beta two or three reactive fight or flight energy because they don't know how to, they literally don't know how to play the game in a way that is feeling good in their body. And so as I learn myself, I'm happy to share with you all the little tools and big tools that I'm learning. And I, I know that they will be helpful for you because they're really helpful for me. Um, and yeah, I definitely used that complaint one a lot this week. I was like, this is the frequency that I need in my life. And, and in general, I have been uh, encouraged over and over, and I'll share this with you um, because I feel like a lot of us could learn from this, is I've been invited to go on this adventure to the States um, and be in the frequency of receiving. Because for me in my life, I'm always giving, 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 giving you know, like whether it's coaching someone or making courses or, you know, doing community impact here on the ground, on the island. Um, and just in my friend group, like everyone's like, Brittany, do you know this thing? But they're like asking me questions. And a lot of times I do know the thing, you know, so it's like, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not ill place. It's not like, it's not like I don't know, but there's a lot of giving frequency of me giving my energy out in different ways. And um, I'm very excited to go to the States and be in this receiving frequency and allow the universe and whoever shows up to, you know, just, yeah, just receive all the beautiful things. Um, because I know for me that will give me even more energy to give in the world. And that's, that's something I wanted to share with you that, you know, like, especially if you're someone who gives a lot in your life, it's really important to allow yourself to receive because the more that you allow yourself to receive, it's the symbiotic circle that you're able to give more. Uh, and I feel that there's very few of us, you know, I would consider us like star seeds in the world compared to everyone else. And we're just like these pure souls that just like really, we came here to help. We came here to raise the collective vibration. Um, and people can feel that people can feel that frequency and so it's very important one to protect yourself so that you don't get like just completely overwhelmed and drained by everyone's needs and two it's really important that you help in the way that actually brings you joy I, do, I, I share this a lot on my human design readings with people it's like it's very important that you are showing up in the specific thing that brings you satisfaction because there's someone else that will help those other people. Like I, the example I, I give is like, you know, growing up, my mom would always be like, finish your food because there's starving kids in Africa, you know? And so and I've actually gone to Africa a lot and I've, I've worked in different um, impact there, especially with empowering the women. Uh, like entrepreneurship and business and stuff, empowering women in South Africa. And I really enjoy it. And so for me, that's something I really enjoy. But is it my highest excitement to help spread the resources to make sure everyone gets enough food in Africa? No, that is not my highest excitement. But I'm positive that there's someone else in the world where that is their highest excitement and they're working on it right now. So even if you can see that there's a need somewhere, if it's not your personal joy to fulfill that need, please don't feel guilty about that. You don't need to do it just because you can see it. 
You need to put your energy into things that actually bring you joy that are helping the world because there is something for all of us. All of us have something that bring us so much joy that we would do it even if there was no money involved and it's helping the world to be a better place. And this is how I feel about making these podcasts with you and, and just like all of this impact that I'm doing and like empowering people to be their most authentic selves and helping them to trust the universe and helping them to create their dream reality. This is why I'm launching this course September 1st. And there's just so much that I love to do that like for me, it doesn't feel like a job. It doesn't feel like, oh, it's this thing. Like, you know, I just went and got my hair done and I was like, oh my gosh, I have a human design reading in one hour. Okay, I'm so excited to make a podcast. I'm so excited to (sighs) just share some of this yummy vibration with you one more time before I go on my trip. And for me, this is me following my joy. And there is something like that for you out there if you haven't found it already. Trust that you will find it. Trust that it exists. And it will come to you. Um, And just make sure that you are creating space for that. Because if you're already spending all of your energy doing something that doesn't actually bring you joy, even if it does help the world, then to me, that's not you living your, your highest timeline. It's not you living your dream life. You living your dream life is doing something that actually is your soul mission that's helping the world. And you will know that it's your soul mission because it brings you so much joy. <sighs> like by you doing it, you're getting energy back. You know, like when, I, when I'm creating courses for all of you, I wake up in the middle of the night n- with new ideas and things I need to write down or like the podcast, like I'll be out talking to someone and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I need to put this in one of my podcasts. I'm so excited to share it with my community. So for me, that is the kind of energy that is like you on your soul mission. Like you're so excited that you just like stop everything and you're just like, Oh, I need to do this now. You know, like I am committed to this purely because it brings me so much joy. Hmm. So um yeah I I guess I just wanted to like let you know that I'm very grateful that all of you are here on my journey with me and that it's a super vulnerable thing for me to go to the states like I don't know what's gonna happen I have no clue but I do feel such a big amount of expansion I do feel already energetically like so much unfolding so many opportunities that I'm excited to share with you soon and it's just like (laughs) you know that feeling like when you're you it's like your first day of school you know like say it's like first day of high school or something and like for me I remember these days where I was so excited and I I'm super into fashion so I was like planning my outfit for a long time and I would like think about when I was going to sleep, I'd lay out all my clothes, like what I would wear and how how I'd look and how I'd do my hair the next day. But it was also just this excitement of just knowing that there's so many new things coming, like new people you're going to meet. And like for me, be like, oh, is there any cute boys? (laughs) And also I love to study. So like uh, I was really excited to go to school and like learn all these new things. Uh, And that's how I feel about going to the States right now. It's like, yeah, there's like places for me to wear cute outfits. And there's probably going to be a lot of hot, amazing men on my vibration and lots of things to learn uh, about myself, about the world, about the collective and be able to share all of this with you. So, yeah, just I invite you that if there is something that is like your soul calling, if there's something that's calling to you, these whispers of the heart, for you to go and do the thing because um even like less than a month ago I, d- I wasn't going to Burning Man like I didn't know I was going to the states and then it, and then it w- took a lot of support from my soul family and me praying and literally connecting to my higher self and connecting to my source of just like is this really what I meant to do and like please give me some signs give me some demonstrations and I got so many signs so much synchronicity so much clarity that this is what I meant to do and so here we go I literally feel like I'm just like stepping off the ledge and just like going into the unknown and it's super ironic because when I was 25 I was sitting in my apartment in um, New York City and like 
I just packed all my bags and I was like about to get on the train to go to the airport to meet up with the travel company that I'd started with two other people in Italy. No, we're meeting in Portugal. And I was leaving my very cushy law firm job. I was leaving my super nice apartment with one of my best friends on the in Upper Harlem. And I was just sitting there like on the edge of my bed with like my feet hanging down. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, am I doing the right thing? Like, cause you know, like I had spent uh, a lot of my life wishing that I had this dream. And I thought that dream was me living in New York city. Like I'm from California. I got married and went to school in Salt Lake city, which is such a random place, but that's where my ex-husband is from. And then I moved to Costa Rica, and then I moved to New York City. And so for, like, a lot of the American dream, like, if you're from the West Coast, you want to go and live and work on the East Coast. And then if you're from, like, basically, like, all the people who grew up in New York moved to California, and all of us who are from California moved to New York. So it's just ironic that I fulfilled that, and at 24, I fulfilled that. And I then I was just like, oh wait, my dreams are so much bigger. And in order to get to that next level, I had to really step into the unknown. So I was leaving like a really good paying job, a really like really good apartment with a close friend, and just this very cushy, stable life in the States that like most people w would be like the top of the top of their dream, you know? And for me, it was, I was already ready for the next thing because I could feel that my soul was made for something so much bigger. And still, there was this moment of, am I doing the right thing? Like, like this is not the secure thing to do, you know? Like, this is this is very much literally going out on a ledge, you know? I, um, I had, like, invested a lot of my savings into the startup, the travel company. And so it was like, <laughs> you know, I could always come back and, like, try and get the same job, but it wasn't, I would, like, for me, success was moving forward. And I wasn't sure how that was going to go and so I just remember having kind of in English we have this saying like come to Jesus moment where it's just like you're kind of like sitting there like talking to God or the universe and you're just like am I doing the right thing are, you, are, are, are we sure about this <laughs> and I, I did it and um and now I think about like how you know I've traveled to over 70 countries I've based in Thailand for almost nine years and I've built community all over the world built businesses all over the world and just had the most epic adventures and love stories, you know, like so much love and connection and friendship and, and so much growing. Um, and I'm feeling that same feeling going back to the States. So like going back there, I feel this like, you know, sitting on the edge of my bed, like, am I doing the right thing? Like, and it's not that I'm leaving this life behind. I'm, I, I have my house here and my dog and my community and my life. But there's this feeling of like there, this, is, this step is going to take me to the next level of my life in whatever way that means. I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> uh, and that stepping into the unknown is, yeah, it's a lot. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, but I'm sharing this with you to activate you and inspire you that if there's something in your life that you are very excited to do and it scares you, it's usually, if it scares you, it's usually because you're meant to do it. And, and there's a lot of growth there and there's a lot of adventure there. <coughs> and, and of course, if it scares you, it means there's a risk. But if there's a risk involved, it means that there's a lot to gain, you know, like, and I personally would rather live my life fully like fully, like I would, I'd rather look back on my life knowing I took all the risks, all of the risks that were, you know, deemed worthy, um, all the necessary risks. And I had all the adventure, the love, the connection, the wealth, the everything, you know, the impact. <coughs> and I lived my life fully. I think for me, that is the biggest thing that I want to say here is like, are you living your life fully do you feel fully alive in your life and that doesn't mean that you're going to know what's happening next usually that means you have no clue what's happening next but you're trusting and you're putting yourself out there and you're doing big things things that scare you because when you do things that scare you that means you're growing 
if you want to do the same thing forever, you're not going to grow. And for me, I always want to grow. I'm a growth junkie. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, if you weren't watching, I just winked at the camera, which was super weird. Um, but I'm in one of those weird moods today. <laughs> feeling, feeling all the feelings still. I have to go now because I'm giving one of your beautiful souls a human design reading in two minutes. Um, I'm sending you all lots of love. And please wish me positive energy on my trip. Um, if you're going to be at Burning Man, let me know. A lot of you have hit me up and let me know. I'm going to be in the Soul Seekers camp, which I think is A22. I don't know what any of this means yet. <laughs> I just know that it's a good location in Burning Man. So if you're coming, come find me and say hi. And yeah, I will see you guys on the flip side. I, will, I might make some podcasts like on my way there. But also, I don't know, we're going straight, we're flying straight into San Francisco, we're driving to Reno to get my friend's camper van, and then we are actually going into Burning Man a couple of days early. We have an early pass to help set up our camp a little bit. So I get to see the city of Burning Man being built. I just found out the other day, it's like 80,000 people. I think that's right, but that's a lot of people. It's like a full city in the desert that gets built. So anyways, okay, sending lots of love. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Okay, so I want to jump on here and do a little um, bonus feature. <laughs> I had a human design reading that I gave after this. I made this podcast and a couple things came up for me, um, sparked by one of you lovely souls. And something I really, I don't know if I like properly went into in this podcast, <sighs> and I feel like it's really important to say is that Part of having the human experience is allowing yourself to feel all of the feelings. And feeling all of the feelings is sometimes going to include sadness. It's sometimes going to include grief. It's sometimes going to include frustration, anger, all the things, you know. I feel like there would be actually something wrong with us <laughs> um, in these human bodies if we only felt joy. So... This week, I definitely went into and allowed myself to feel the utter grief that I still feel over my last breakup. And, you know, on the day-to-day, -day, I do my best to look on the bright side and move through it and, you know, move on with my life. As in, like, I do feel this big expansion right now and I feel so many beautiful things are coming my way and I'm receiving them all with grace and gratitude. And also in order to create space for that expansion, I have to allow myself to move through the feelings that are coming up and wanting to be processed. <sighs> and this week, a lot of those feelings was sadness and grief and just this like, you know, we built this beautiful thing together and like, is there any way that we can, there's still this part of me that like, is there any way that we can fix this, salvage this, blah, 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 blah. And what I came to, the conclusion I came to was that in order, f like for me in my process, in order for me to allow anything to come of it in the future, I have to really let it die. Like, I have to let their relationship completely shatter and die in all of its forms and let this person go. And that is the only way that I will be able to create space for all of the next things the universe wants to bring me. And also create space for anything that is coming in the future with me and this person, whatever that means. And so... I I just really want to say this to you that if you're going through a breakup or if you're just going through something hard with someone where you need to create space, it's okay and it's okay to miss them and it's okay to honor all the good times you had and it's okay to grieve. Um, I really I said this in a past progress podcast that I feel like breakups are a form of death. It's an energy death of not only what you had been like building together, but also the potential of what you could be you know like what you were building towards because for me relationships are not just oh we're just hanging out it's like no I'm like it's a creatorship you know like we're building something for us for maybe our future kids for our community for the collective it's something bigger than just us <sighs> and yeah this week I had a lot of pain around that and it's interesting because I'll have 
times and days where I am so in my power uh, on the positive side where I'm like, everything makes sense and everything's going in the right direction. And this is the point I want to say to you is those days when you're feeling like, I don't know what the fuck's going on and I'm really sad and I'm grieving. If you allow yourself to feel those feelings, that is you also in your power. Because there's something to be learned there. There's some energy to be moved through. And if nothing else, it is part of this beautiful human experience that we're choosing to have. And I choose to not deny myself any parts of that experience. I am here to feel it all. Like, give it to me, let's go, you know? So... Yeah, I was really in it <laughs> and it sucked <laughs> and it was beautiful. The beautiful sorrow, it was all it was all the things. And because I allowed myself to feel it, I woke up this morning and I was feeling better. I was no longer, because sometimes for me, the only time I really get sick is when I don't allow myself to process something and I add too many external things, like 3D things on top. And my body's like, okay, we're going to make you sit down and feel these things. And so when I surrendered to that when I made space for that when I was gentle with myself and accepted myself and loved myself in that my body no longer needed to create a reason for me to slow down so I woke up this morning and I was able to feel better feel clear-headed go to the gym do all the things that I needed to do to get ready for my journey tomorrow and so I'm sharing this with you that it's it's okay and it's perfect and just allow yourself to feel because that's where you get your power. The world is creating this illusion that the only positive, the only power is us being in our positive energy. And honestly, we might as well be robots at that point because for us here as humans in this timeline right now, we've chosen to have the full spectrum of emotional reality. And if you deny either side of those things, you're not in balance. And in order to be fully in balance and be fully in your center and be fully in your power, you need to allow yourself to feel the full spectrum. So I'm here with you. We're doing it together. <laughs> and for me, this is me being my authentic self is to share this with you raw and real because to me, that's what true leadership is. Like leadership is, yeah, allowing yourself to be seen in all of it it's not about what happens it's how you deal with it how you let it move through you and do you choose to stay in your center and trust the universe that in the end it's all going to be okay hmm. so i'll leave you with that and i'm sending you all lots of love